G'day everybody, how's it going? Coming at you from uh, Hermanus in South Africa and I just thought I would do a quick what's in my camera bag video for you. I'm traveling at the moment and on holiday with family as well and I did bring some film gear, just the bare essentials for what I would need uh, if I was to do some work while here in South Africa. So let me just take you through that, what I travel with, how I pack it in my bag. Hopefully you can get something out of it. Let's take a look. So the bag I use is a Vanguard bag. It's uh, the Uprise, I think it's called, Uprise 46. So generally I have the tripod connected to this tripod area here uh, with the clip over the top and over the front, but I'm currently using that obviously to film this. So that's the bag I use. It's not got heaps of pockets. It's really just got a front pocket, a front zippered pocket, uh, in this front pocket, I keep batteries, um, lots of batteries for the Canon 5D Mark IV. I also keep a 9 volt battery in there as well so that I can make sure that if my mic is left on or anything like that, I've got a spare battery for that. Sometimes I'll put other cables and connectors like headphones and um, a charging cable for my mobile phone in there as well. So that's basically all that I put in the front. So inside the backpack, it opens up from the front, which I do like uh, when I'm traveling because I can get quick access to it. I know there's some things around safety having it at the back, but it kind of just annoyed me to have it at the back. So I like it in the front better. So inside the bag, you can take a look. It's set up pretty nicely. A few loose items in the top here um, that I'm not too, too worried about but generally it's set up pretty nicely. So first, first things first, the 5D Mark IV. And that's my main camera for everything I do, uh, shooting wise and for photography as well. The Rode Video Mic Pro, which is a really decent microphone. So that's my main mic that I use um, for anything piece to camera. Uh, I will also mention on the 5D Mark IV, the 24 mm f1.4 lens. That's an amazing lens for vlogging and also for anything piece to camera, I can shoot it in 4K uh, with this Rode video mic and get pretty good results. Not perfect, not as if I was booming close to the subject or if I was on a lav like I am now, but pretty decent results from that. Uh, inside here, just a little nifty 50. Uh, all you newbies out there, this is what you want to start on, on a full frame body camera because that focal length is something that comes from, like originates from photography. Uh, so from right back in the day, it's like a really good focal length to practice with and to use. So that's the kind of lens you want to get. They're cheap. Uh, they fetch for about 150 Aussie dollars, maybe around 100 US dollars. So an excellent lens as well. Optically, it's beautiful. I still shoot some corporate um, interviews. I love this lens. It's fantastic. So make sure you've got one of those in your kit just in case. Uh, then moving on here, just some NDs. So I've got basically uh, one polarizer here. This is a polarizing filter, really good for shooting outdoors, just for photography and also video, just to cut down some light and some lens flare and glare on the lens. Uh, and variable ND filter, everyone shooting on DSLRs needs to have one of these. I've actually got two, one that fits on the 50 mil lens and one that goes on my bigger lenses, the L-series lenses, uh, which I think is a 72 millimeter. Uh, let me see quickly, 77 millimeter. So that fits on the big L-series. So my three main lenses, that one fits on those. So they're really important uh, when I'm wanting to stop down the light uh, and I'm you know, running in, in the sunlight and I want to kind of get a low depth of field, <clears throat> but not get too much light into the camera. So that's great. Onto my favorite lens. I have to say this beast is my favorite lens. This is the Canon 7200 uh, F 2.8 IS Mark II. And this lens is awesome. If I could, I would shoot every single thing on this lens. I just love it. It's awesome. Obviously I can't, I need to shoot wide sometimes, but this lens uh, is awesome. I picked up this lens 
with this bag uh, and a Canon 5D Mark II body and a few other bits and pieces. Also, I think I got the 24 f1.4. I got it all for 3,000 Aussie dollars. So for those out there thinking that it's not achievable to uh, get gear like this, you know, this is a 2,600 Aussie dollar lens and I know that might seem unachievable, but it was also felt like that for me when I began as well. It felt like I would never ever own a lens like this. I had the Tamron 7200 f2.8, which is a fantastic lens as well. It's got the image stabilization as well, but I just love this Canon lens. These two things are opposite on the Tamron and also the direction is opposite. So that was always something that got to me on the Tamron lens. Uh, and I really love this lens. I use it for photography. I use it for uh, any interviews where I want a really nice shot, uh, not a shot that looks like it's sort of coming in on the subject and rounding out the subject. It's just a great, great piece of glass. So into the top section, I've just got some Sennheiser HD 380 Pro. They're not an expensive pair of headphones, but I've, I've got used to those as reference headphones. So that's what it is. They're pretty beat up. Uh, as you can see, the foam's all coming away. The internal, um, whatever this sort of stuff is on the outside, it's all gone. So, you know, that's why they're just thrown in there. I'm not too worried about those. So they're thrown in there. Another one of my lenses, which I picked up at a steal of a price, this is the Canon uh, 17 to 40 f4. This is a great all round lens for doing anything like B roll or just getting quick shots or any wider stuff on the 5D Mark IV full frame or when I'm shooting 4K, this is great. This lens I picked up super cheap off a friend of mine. It actually had a broken, uh, I think it was not the focus ring, it was the zoom. So the zoom on the lens was broken and I actually went to a Canon guy who fixes stuff and he fixed it for me for free. It was only a small pin that had come out of the lens and was missing. So basically it was so easy to get fixed and it, he actually didn't charge me to fix it. So I picked it up for $200. So about, about a thousand dollar lens. It's just the original uh, 17 to 40, but great lens. There is a small blemish on this lens as well, which is also why I've just thrown it in here just a tiny little scratch on the middle of the lens. It doesn't affect the image only when I'm shooting in direct sunlight. So if I'm shooting into direct sunlight or if the sun is coming across the lens, some of my shots you'll see in corporate stuff, it's a little lens flare that wouldn't otherwise be there. So that's what I have to look out for when I'm shooting with that lens. But I'll eventually upgrade, I think I'll probably go the 16 to 35 f2.8. I think that's the lens, but this lens, I really enjoy uh, using that lens as well. So then in the top here, uh, I've just got some things. Um, that's the headphone cable, uh, some lens caps, and some uh, cloth here just to clean the lens with. And then here I've got just some more CF cards. I've got two 32 gig cards, nice and fast so I can shoot 4K on those, and a 64 gig. In the camera, in the 5D Mark IV, I run two 128 gig cards and I want to step that up to running two 256 because I want to be able to shoot longer in 4K. Um, and then I've just got a Sharpie here just for marking out stuff if I want to, um, if I'm doing anything and I just want to mark some stuff down on paper or anything like that. Another older 16 gigabyte Lexar 800X. I tend to like the Lexar cards. They've never let me down before. So these are kind of the cards I go to. And also this one is the SanDisk 32, but I think I bought that with a camera body when I maybe picked up the 5D Mark IV. I picked it up secondhand. I've only paid just over 3,000 Aussie dollars for the body. Uh, so I think I picked up that card with those. But if I had my preference, I'd get the Lexa Professional 1066X. They are super fast and they've never let me down. That's a UDMA7. Cool, so the other one is I have a Peak Design strap. Um, this is awesome for the camera because basically the strap goes around your neck and then I've got quick release um, things on the camera, uh, little locks and it just locks in. Anytime I want to do handheld stuff and have it stabilized, this is what I use for that. And anytime I'm just walking around and the camera's outside the bag, I just throw that on. So that's pretty much it. Uh, one more cheese plate here I've got as well just as a second option. Sometimes I'm running already one on the 70 to 200. So then I wanna run it on my main monopod. So that's it there. 
So that's everything in the bag that I travel with. There's no other secret compartments or anything with this bag. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, what I do like about it though as well is it's got an area for my laptop. So that's out in another room at the moment. And basically I use that for, um, yeah, just carrying the laptop. It's easy access on and off planes and stuff like that. It's got a rain hood, this one, which is good for any travel that I do. Sit this down here and the rain hood comes out and goes over. So perfect for if I'm stuck out in the rain or anything like that. So that's everything I travel with on me when I'm traveling. So um, what I also take in my check-in luggage is I take a glide cam because I love to travel with the glide cam and I also take a monopod. So I'll just quickly show you those and then that will round out what I travel with. So let me just quickly grab those. So this is the glide cam HD 4000. And <clears throat> I love this. This is an amazing piece of equipment. Uh, it's awesome. I do all my stabilized shots on this. It's so easy to travel with, so quick to set up. And I just love the image that it gives as well. So basically, I just put it together quickly like this. And I can do this super quick. I can just jump off. I can just go anywhere, set it up super quick, and then get shooting on it. So basically just like that. And I've got a quick release cheese plate on top. Same as the Manfrotto that I use on all my other stuff. So basically it's super easy just to take the camera from a monopod straight onto the glide cam. It's already pretty much balanced for the 5D Mark IV with a 24 mil 1.4 lens on it. And I can also run it with a Rode video mic on top as well and get it balanced pretty easy. Good thing about the cheese plate is that I can just, if it's not balanced foot front and back, so for example, if I put an ND filter on the lens or if I put the Rode Video Mic Pro on top, then I need to balance it forward and back a tiny bit. So with the cheese plate, I can just loosen it and just rock it forward and back without worrying about rebalancing. So that's an awesome little trick that I use as well. I've got this little riser plate here, which actually just puts the camera up that tiny bit higher and allows me to see the back screen a little easier and a little less awkwardly. So I'd recommend a glide cam. If you haven't had a go of a glide cam or if you've heard bad reviews or you've heard it's too hard to balance, don't worry about all of that. Just go and get yourself one. Watch some YouTube tutorials on how to balance it. Uh, get good at balancing it quickly and you will never look back. So I would recommend you go out and get a glide cam for yourself. So one final thing that I actually don't have with me, it's in the boot of the car at the moment, is a monopod. And I use a Benro monopod with, I think it's an S4 head on it. It's very similar to a Manfrotto monopod. The build quality is excellent and I've never had an issue with it. So guys, that rounds out the gear that I'm traveling with. All this gear gives me the range that I need when I travel. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. Subscribe if you haven't already and like this video. Comment below if you have any other questions about gear that maybe you think is missing in the kit, gear that I might have left at home and the reasons why. Make sure you jump down below and put some comments and let me know what you think. All right, well, thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.